On November 17, 2019, the first case of COVID-19 was detected in Wuhan, China. Little did we know then how that isolated case would forever change life for the contemporary world. When we first heard of COVID-19, our top priority was to mobilize our volunteers and staff from national society so they could engage communities to ultimately prevent transmission of the virus, reduce misinformation and provide psychological support to avoid panic. In those early days, we neither imagined that we would be living during a pandemic of this magnitude for the first time in the history of humankind, nor that we would pull together the scale of the response that the Red Cross and Red Crescent did. We knew a pandemic was imminent and that immediate action was needed. Our work began way before we launched the biggest ever appeal in the records of the organization for 670 million Swiss francs. The COVID-19 emergency appeal went live on January 31st, 2020. The virus was no longer a regional matter, but a humanitarian problem of gargantuan scale. On March 11th, 2020, WHO categorized COVID-19 a pandemic. The world had to change overnight. The number of COVID-19 cases grew every day, and the lethal impact of the virus was seen by humankind, witnessing horrifying scenes of human suffering with astonishment. So at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, our communities were plagued with a lot of confusion and fear. While most projects shifted their focus to addressing the health concerns that arose, it soon became clear that it was not just a health crisis, but also an educational and socioeconomic one. Uh, as a volunteer, I faced a unique challenge where I had to be extremely careful with my health while working and helping others. So new protocols had to be put in place. Uh, we had to work with people that I had never met before and ensured everyone's safety by getting tested regularly again and again. And this became the norm every week before doing anything. So despite these new risks, it was crucial that our service delivery to the communities did not stop and that we were able to address short-term and long-term concerns to achieve our humanitarian goals. <laughs> Uh, Red Cross at Vise, and Red Cross to get the two video, or Kuandi Kaban to have enough because in Mosia Fibaga Bakawunga. Avaga videos or the Twaitanga poor households. The media of Anakuabo so Charlie Gachisibunio. Now I tell you about to work to get to serving humanity because try to the Wakanga to wait is about. And por tanto nosotros apoyamos por ejemplo a las familias eh, yéndole a dejar alimentos a los que no podían salir tratando de apoyar emocionalmente a las familias que perdieron a sus familiares. Y más que nada eso, y apoyando también a las personas que perdieron su trabajo, porque gran parte del país en ese tiempo tuvo problemas económicos, como, como, todo, en el, como en todo el mundo. Al inicio no se sabía nada de esta malattia, entonces cada vez que salíamos una ambulancia, teníamos claramente paura. Era solo un momento in cui la paura non, non ci attraversava ed era il momento in cui eravamo a contatto con le persone che andavamo a prendere. Il fatto che ci fossero dei volontari che, che erano lì per loro, che li guardavano, che li assistevano, che cercavano di rassicurarli, eh, era un qualcosa che gli dava conforto. In December 2020, vaccines became available at a record pace, which was a game changer for the pandemic. Testing 
tracing and vaccinating was the perfect triad to start controlling COVID-19. Yet, the shocking inequality in the distribution of the vaccine was indeed a moral failure. It became clear that the safety and well-being of each individual was critical for the safety and well-being of the entire world. We all learned the importance of wearing masks, washing hands, as well as the urgent need to strengthen each country's health system. The results achieved by the International Federation of the Red Cross and the Red Crescent National Societies showed the commitment of the organization and the unique auxiliary role it holds for governments. By the closure of the appeal on December 31, 2022, we achieved the following results in 172 countries. 18 million people received mental health and psychosocial support services. 28 million people received essential community health services. 92 million people received food and in-kind assistance. 120 million people were tested. 132 million people with vaccine hesitancy were reached with risk communication and community engagement. 137 million people received water, sanitation, and hygiene. 161 million people received support during COVID-19 vaccination. 1.2 billion people reached via health and hygiene promotion activities. Thanks for your incredible job. The results achieved by the IFRC network are outstanding. And for that, I voice my heartfelt thanks to our unstoppable volunteers and staff for adapting swiftly and remarkably to new ways of working. Our work is more relevant and needed than ever before, and we are committed to exponentially growing our reach and doing much more. In the next five years, we will be supporting national societies, volunteers' actions in vaccination, first aid, mental health, including psychosocial support services. Risk communication, community engagement, and livelihood are going to be part of our action too. We are championing an inclusive, resilient, and green recovery from the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic brought about unprecedented human suffering. It also brought out the best of humanity through countless acts of service by millions of volunteers and healthcare workers across the world. On behalf of everyone around the world, I want to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude for their unwavering dedication and tireless efforts in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Their determination to make a positive impact, even in the midst of uncertainty and adversity, has truly been an inspiration to us all. We also want to thank all our partners and donors for their generosity to enable these massive global efforts. It is because of their commitment we were able to overcome the challenges presented by this unprecedented crisis. COVID-19 is not at over, and its impact will be felt for years to come. It is critically important to ensure that the ongoing recovery efforts are transformational for a better, more equitable and resilient future. Exhausted. The number of hours that we dedicate because connecting the globe in one single crisis requires a lot of, of international coherence. It was very heavy, I would say. From the beginning, almost up until the very end, seeing so much suffering was very heavy, particularly, I would say, mentally. Años atrás para el terremoto, trabaj trabajamos mucho con las personas que, que estaban, por así decirlo, emocionalmente quebradas. Pero esta vez fue muy distinto porque las personas no estaban preparadas para esto, al igual que el terremoto, pero no estaban preparadas para algo tan... ver, ver a sus familias prácticamente con problemas de salud tan, tan graves de un momento a otro. Por tanto, siento que, que a la vez uno ya era sensible como voluntario, pero siento que ahora estamos como mucho más eh, susceptibles a, a... mucho más... ¿cómo se podría decir? Estamos mucho más expuestos. Entonces eso igual es como a la vez que uno se siente cierto más humano de lo que ya es, se siente también como preocupado porque somos muy frágiles. Wow. Well, I, the problem is I have mixed positions in this pandemic. Um, I felt that the world is very vulnerable. The world is very weak. 
and the world has a lot of unjust and unfairness. It was somehow before the pandemic, the writing was all over the wall, but in the pandemic, we actually read the writing, which was there, uh, and uh, it was rubbed in our face. I feel human, responsible, ready to support other people, and also very committed to create new opportunities for people to do their work better and respond to the big uh, demanding that we had during this period and uh, ready to invent solutions with scarce resources and with lack of support of many people, lack of integration. Made me more flexible, made me more resilient. Like I was willing to roll with whatever was willing to come is going to come next. Yeah, I was able to be more adaptive. So the sense of responsibility, the, you know, the, you, you feel that the weight of responsibility on your shoulders when you are just starting the work. So you didn't have much time to think about anything else. You just wanted to make sure that you are leading the organization in a way it should be led. The second aspect was really challenging. The challenging was how do we ensure the duty of care to respond to a crisis when we did not know what it was. Of course, we have our volunteers who are so willing, so motivated to go and do something on the ground while we were getting announcements that you need to lock down. So how do we reconcile the need for volunteers to go out and their commitment to go out versus the government's decision to lock down? How do we reconcile that? And when the volunteers go out, how to make sure that they are supported? And you know, the early days, we didn't have enough PPEs and we didn't even know fully what needs to be done. So balancing that duty of care and duty of service. When you lose a, a member of your family and you cannot say goodbye and you cannot accompany to them, there is something that keeps in your, in your mind that requires a lot of support. It just taught me to be kinder to everyone around me. I'm a shining person. Uh, I'm a person who is very good. مش يعني مش ما كنتش بعرف اتعامل مع الاشخاص بسهوله في المشروع ده قدرت ان انا اتعامل مع افكار مختلفه عني اشخاص مختلفه عني في التفكير بتاعهم وكمان قدرت ان انا اتعامل مع تيم متخصص وكان في منهم اطباء متخصصين وان انا كمان قدرت ان انا اتعلم ازاي اكون واثقه من الكلام اللي انا بتكلم فيه um it's probably a, the moment that's really uh, touched me on the personal level was the moment that my 82 years old dad got vaccinated in this pandemic it was the moment that i really appreciated science i appreciated uh, the evidence and i appreciated also the the gift of being living in a community that has some sort of an equality when others did not have that ability to protect themselves. One of the things that changed me forever is when I saw the pictures of a lot of airports, highways completely locked down and how in a moment the world that was buzzing with millions and millions of people all roaming globally, suddenly it was a complete silence and everybody was hiding within their shelters. Um, and so it was, a, it was a moment that I felt we're too vulnerable. Non c'è veramente il giorno in cui io non ci pensi e a tante persone che ho trasportato con altrettante fragilità che mi sono, mi sono rimaste veramente dentro. Yes, the moment that I, I uh, see uh, myself changing a lot was the moment in which I start to listen more and more the team and the people in the ground. I was doing a big exercise of listening, observing, understanding, and creating this sense of connection with the suffering of people, with the, the fears, with the uh, sense of uh, uh, anxiety for many people. And I was putting myself in the mood of helper, in the mood of support, in the mood of understanding, in order to be able to digest the problems, see the problems, and then uh, react properly to create solutions with them, 
with my interlocutors. It's not only you creating solutions to work with people. For me, the pandemic was a big opportunity to be more human and to manage well the relations among all of us in a more consistent, balanced and uh, integrated way. When we heard the news that the first volunteer died because of COVID-19, and that was the that was the moment of very tough reflections. Uh, the volunteer, you know, who just came out to help most of the elderly uh, population who couldn't go to the hospital by, by themselves. And he was an ambulance driver and he was helping them. And that was the time the early um, information was this was primarily affecting the elderly population. And he, here we have a volunteer who was in his mid 30s, died of COVID. And that was the moment that hit me very, very hard as a new Secretary General trying to steer an organization in a situation where the information was so limited. But at the same time, we had a group of volunteers who were committed to go and do something. Uh, and, and that's when the sense of duty of care and how do we make sure in a practical way that that, can, that could be provided. So I think we could have probably shortened the, 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 the pandemic if there was the same level of solidarity once the vaccine, vaccine came. The lessons were learned, but a bit slowly and probably we lost more lives than we should have. Um, if we had uh, shown that solidarity and vaccine a bit earlier with slightly bigger heart.